One of the things that we're watching for in uh, North Korea is the pace of missile development. And we've seen that the North Koreans have made a conscious decision inside the regime that they must complete this long-range nuclear-capable missile program. The latest missile test, the Hwasong-14 is what the North Koreans are calling it, uh, depending upon who you listen to, was a dem demonstrated ICBM. Some people are calling it an IRBM as a way of easing uh, some of the sense of imminent pressure on the United States. The South Koreans, for example, have come out and emphasized that the North still doesn't have re-entry technology. The reason why all of this matters in getting into the technical details of the missile is that for the United States right now, North Korea does not have the ability, outside of some weird way of loading a device on a shipping container or something, of delivering a nuclear weapon to the continental United States. The U.S. has determined that it can't allow North Korea to acquire that capacity because that would change the way in which the U.S. can exert its power uh, and its influence within Northeast Asia. If North Korea could strike the U.S. with a nuclear weapon, even if the chances of hitting were extremely slim, um, it still uh, has a huge impact on how the U.S. makes, makes cost-benefit analyses in choosing what options it's going to take. As we're watching this North Korean development then, so is the United States, and it's pushing the United States closer and closer to a point where it has to find some way to stop this. There is in the U.S. the possibility that traditional nuclear deterrence would stop the North Koreans from striking at the United States, and therefore you don't have to stop this program. This program doesn't completely change things. But there is a political aspect, a political will aspect in the United States as well. So even if militarily this is not a fundamental change in the security situation for the United States, politically it may be. In some ways we're at the closest to a military crisis on the Korean Peninsula than we have been since 1994. Um, the United States is doing everything it can to find a non-military solution, but a non-military solution in many ways shy of the U.S. just going and opening dialogue with the North Koreans. There's not an interest in a moratorium on North Korean testing. There is an interest in the end to the program and even a rolling back of the program. What the U.S. is doing is putting pressure not necessarily on North Korea, but really on China. Um, and by threatening uh, to take military action against North Korea by saying that if this isn't resolved, the U.S. will have to take unilateral action, and the only unilateral choice the U.S. has is military action, they're trying to change the way China looks at it. China's position is that the destabilization of North Korea is more dangerous than uh, the development of North Korea's nuclear and missile program. What the United States wants to do is demonstrate to China that if the Chinese do not take the risk of stepping in and changing the North Korean regime, which could risk the destabilization of North Korea. Instead, they will have military action that will leave U.S. forces on the Chinese border. Currently, the Chinese don't believe that that's going to happen from the U.S., but that's really what we're watching. And, and perhaps interestingly, the latest little bit of a leak out of the United States that they were watching the last North Korean missile launch uh, was both an emphasis that they could strike that missile and that the North Koreans don't have the ability to catch the U.S. unawares, and therefore it's not a true deterrent. But also, interestingly, that that means they were watching Kim Jong-un walking around the missile, had the opportunity uh, to strike and kill Kim Jong-un, and what they're letting the North Korean leadership know is that a intercontinental ballistic missile with a nuclear warhead is not necessarily a guarantee of regime security. The only guarantee really is the political will of the United States and therefore the North Koreans ought to give up the program.